Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and my co-host is here too, Bob, Bob Williams, you know Bob, and and we also have our guest today. You've seen her on before, and I'm talking about Dr. Cynthia Harris, Thank you. a former principal of Jefferson High School. I think we still have a Jefferson High School over there, don't we? For now. For now? Okay, good. <laughs> and then, but better than that, she was at one point in time, she was one of the assistant superintendents area. here at Area mm -hmm. Superintendent for Portland Public Schools. So we're going to have a very interesting show. But let me start off with by saying hopefully everybody had a good Thanksgiving and and. Uh, and now the thing is that uh, for the next four years, are we going to be able to have another Thanksgiving? I don't know, <laughs> we, but we're going to work at that peace aspect of it. As you know, we've uh, we've had the outcome of the uh, the presidential election. I think that's what everybody was focusing on, and President Obama has uh, has taken up a second term, and he's got his work to do. But at the same time, the big picture up there on the, on the scene, the major scene is. That Club. You remember <laughs> he was outreaching to, to yeah. the business, to business yeah. folks. Yeah. You know, I came to that Identifying night. small businesses right. yes, who happened to be African Americans, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And went down to Norma's Kitchen there for an issue. Yeah, yeah we tried occasions. to meet with the clergy. We tried to really reach you out to this. the community. Yeah. I'm not sure what is frightening um, to um, you know, to the structure, but I think um, that's the only way a school that needs to come up can come up. Everybody has to help. Everybody has to be enrolled. Everybody has to help. And no one can be um, scared of that. Mm -hmm. Everybody right. has to be willing to, to, to lift up. Do you, it's sometimes... And I'm going to say this, and I know uh, my friends uh, in the it's community all positive, is, going, we, is going, to, going to try and take issue with it. But sometimes we look like we are afraid of success, i.e., we, we talk about it, uh, we'll work underneath to try to get there, but when we get close to that door, mm -hmm. we're afraid of well, what's know, on that other, I, on I the other side. I have to really join you in that because I feel like the more successful I got, uh, people hated that. Mm -hmm. You know, as I began to lift the school, the kids began to do better, the scores began to rise. I felt like there was exactly that, a, a huge fear of success in the system itself, in the community. Mm -hmm. So I think people are used to struggling and that's the way they know and they tend to want to be there. You know, it's like you raise it so high and then you push everybody back down. Well, you know, on that same <laughs> note, I might add so, something that yeah. bring, bring it up to the date. And we, we've heard these two words of late in these discussions. It was called gifts and entitlements. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, 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 so what do you think about that? <laughs> what, I mean by that what I mean by that is that those, those things have happened in the past such a way that folks don't really feel secured in that particular job because right. they fell in that same arena. Okay, you got I agree with so that. So consequently, anytime someone comes to something, new idea, creative idea that start transitioning, their thing is that, wait, I signed the contract to do it just this way. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If all of a sudden... Uh, this comes in, I'm lost right. in my real estate. Everything is gone. I, I don't know what to do, if you will. Mm -hmm. i got to make sure I get my purge. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to do anything I can to get my purge, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean but, entitlement in terms of the people that have their jobs. Right, right, right. right. People are scared mm -hmm. for their job. But the people need to understand that we got to go back to the old way. You know, it's about the, it, it was about the kids. It wasn't about just the teachers and the staff and this, that, and the other. It was at, it was at the end of the day. Well, are they graduating? Are they, I mean, that was their job. Are they, with an education. With an education. Education. Not just going through the system. That's right. That's right. But and I think I go back to your point about um, the fear of success and yes. achievement. Okay. Uh, I think um, everybody has to be accountable in that area. That you know, to see, make sure that um, the teachers are teaching, mm -hmm. the kids are achieving, and that we hold people accountable. I, I also found that accountability is huge. You know, nobody wants to do the detailed accountability, you know, mm -hmm. except if they think you did something wrong, then they're going over every little T, right? Mm -hmm. But I think um, management is huge, you know, really being evaluated, and, and also data, using data in a wise mm -hmm. way. But your point that you made about um, Fear of success, I think, is huge. Yeah. Well, how were you dealing with it as a principal of Jefferson? How did I deal how with it? <laughs> how were your teachers? Well, how there's your something staff? really different <laughs> about Oregon. Um, you can't really move. The principal moves, but everything else stays the same. I've never seen that mm -hmm. in any other district. Really? 
It's what really was what was that? Well, I think it's it's unionized, but it's also a way to hold everything the same. Oh, yeah. If you have almost no no movement, if the unions hold fast that all the teachers have to be in the same slots and they mm -hmm. can be there for years. Mm -hmm. So when you really look at that, if you were looking at that, I don't know if you'd want to go as a new principal to a school like that where you had no leverage. In other mm -hmm. districts that I've been in, if you send somebody in who's a whip, you give them leverage to that they can make changes, you mm -hmm. hold them accountable. And if you're going to give them some leverage, you're not going to come back and cut their throats at, after two to three years oh you didn't do this but you you give them room you, you, you get rid of certain restrictions you give them room to do what they need to do and I think Oregon um, needs a lot in um, in terms of transformation bold leadership and being willing to back those people as long as you rope people in you can't have this unusual success you it know can't happen. along that same line thinking about when you were principal mm -hmm. of Jefferson High School during that particular time, and they were talking about a bonding measure at that point in time, mm -hmm. they were talking about refurbishing Jefferson High School. Remember that first yes. time around? And you were there. Yes, they did talk about that. But it's not the first school, low achieving that I've been where they talk about it. And in other states, I've seen them raise the money and not do it to the, for the lowest achieving right, school right, right, or right. do them something far, far less. Right. So, yes, that was talked about. It's not talked and about you were now. At the table. No, but you, were, you were at the <laughs> well, table at that point. But now my point is that you weren't at the table. And all of a sudden, now Jefferson High School is not was not one of the schools. Yeah, I saw to that. To refer to. Yeah, well, that. if you if you continue to send kids to a dilapidated building, uh, have them in un, unsafe surroundings, they will adapt to those to those issues, and so it's imperative that the community began to talk to the school board and to uh, the superintendent to find out why are you, my kids continuing to have to come into this building that is now reverting back to the way it used to be. Uh, low, low achievement and, and low participation in students. I mean, last year, I think it was 109 kids that graduated, but they came out of the Boys Academy, the Girls Academy, mm -hmm. and some other uh, yeah, they, they academies don't they had And they don't exist. They, they don't and, exist anymore. And <laughs> I think exist. out of Jefferson, there might have been 30 or 40, mm. maybe, you know, graduates. I could be high or I could be low in the number. But what what bothers me is the fact that what's happening to the kids in the community why are they not going to Jefferson, which is in close proximity of where they live? Is it because of the teachers? Is it because of the type of uh, surroundings that they have to go into? Is it, you know, what is the issue? And why is it that parents are not sending their kids there? They rather put them on a bus and send them across town. And when I say a bus, I'm talking about a city bus because in or in uh, the city of of, uh, well, that's the of, law uh, now, too. I mean, the kids Portland. are going where they want to in, in Oregon now. I understand that's the new policy. If they're now. accepted. If they accept I think it. they have to apply and become accepted. Mm. Uh, I know, I'll give you a perfect example. Everybody talks, think Lincoln is so so great. And so all, I noticed that there were about 50, 60 black kids going to Lincoln. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any black teachers at Lincoln. Mm -hmm. They had one black I, I call them troll that sit by the bridge to make sure to try to make sure the kids were doing were not uh, acting up, you know, and that bothers me well, because that, sometimes we don't investigate where we're sending our children. But you know the politics of that though is something that's going to be ongoing. That part of it. The key is that what what can we do today? That's it. What can we do today? What are we going to do well, to I motivate we these have young to, people? Because um, they're, they're in all due respect, they're by themselves in many ways. I mean, the parents, in all, many of the parents, they they've lost out. They they basically fell through the crack themselves. So we got to come up with some new system, if you will, yeah. that will basically the kids will be motivated. And I think, that in all due respect, vote is the only way. I mean, yeah. it's like saying so many words. Now they instituted a vote uh, a quote a. A community college and community college piece at Jefferson High School. Yes, they have. Here, you are, here, these kids can't even graduate from high school, let alone try to graduate from a community college. <laughs> it just blows your mind. Yeah. Why would they put a community college situation at Jefferson High School? Well, it's very easy to understand, Bruce. That property over the next five years will belong to. PCC. The community <laughs> college. Oh, yeah, so that's really why know. that's why it, it was in the remodeling phase. It's, it's, it's like saying. Uh, if one you saw you saw one rat in your house and you did nothing, hmm. and the next thing you're going to see is a group 
and they're going to eventually take over, you're going to either have to exterminate or move. Well, I tell and, you what. Uh, that's what that's what's going on well, with so Jefferson. As, as one would say, we can agree to disagree, right? Because we're yeah. going to have to bring the people to the table because we, we have the mantle piece, right? We've we, got the Republican and Democrat situation right here, you and I, and we're going to we, we want some solutions to this situation, right? We want solutions. Yeah, absolutely. We've got, we've got, a, we've got a legitimate <laughs> educator here. Mm -hmm. We've got two individuals, and, and it's, the people have said the Republican and Democrats are going to have to solve this problem, mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to do. And I think that, uh, I, I, in all due respect, let's just throw it on the table. Let's, I, we, I'd like to talk. Target. I'd like to target Jefferson High School in all due respect and in, in, in the community college right across the street. We talked about D. Bernardus right. at one point in time because he was the one that basically brought, i.e., the community college to the state of Oregon, i.e., the first one was, get, where do you think it was? Mm -hmm. Right there in northeast Portland, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Osborne and folks like that. Right. And, and, uh, and to see Margaret Carter was part of that deal at the same time. They got jobs, but at the same time, if you will, you got my point, what they should have incorporated it then. In fact, the state of Oregon should have incorporated mm -hmm. and said, okay, fine, rather than K-1 to K-12, it should be K-1 to K-14. And every child should have been graduating, if you will, at with least an associate with a, degree, right. i.e., mm -hmm. because voc ed was taken out of the schools. Mm -hmm. okay. So this way, those who couldn't make it, if you will, to the baccalaureate aspect of it, at mm -hmm. least they had a career. They had a blue collar, i.e. unions, right? Right. Well, you can remember that uh, back, uh, at one point, instead of going to 14, they wanted to go to 10. Yes, yes, yes. And say that a uh, kid was tracked. Yes. And they were either tracked to uh, two years of high school, they would come out with an, with an associate uh, certificate, and they could go to get a job, yes. or they were tracked to four years of high school where they could go on to college. Right. I mean, how dumb are we becoming right, right. as we get smart? Right, right, right. And when you think about the attrition <laughs> and situation, you talk about those folks who are going out of various jobs, the blue-collar jobs, mm -hmm. high-paying jobs. Yeah. Bob can tell you. Hmm. Career is a, a monster, big time, and you get vested. I mean, early on, you got laborers, you got carpenters. I mean, in all due respect, if you don't have those guys, we don't have, if you will, mm -hmm. a, a right. country. But that was this big push, like we talked about. Yeah. There was this big push. All the kids now need to have college. And I took agree. the vocate out. It was just college, mm -hmm. college, college. And he's going to become a manager. They could barely read, <laughs> let alone trying to get get get. Well, I think college. that's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what we talking about. You have yes. to have another option for yeah. the students. And the option is vocate. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you, you know, know, work some out. The thing that everybody has to understand: I want my son to own his own business. I want my son to be in a higher position. But sometimes. You have to work your way there. But how many of those jobs do you have? That's it. You say, out and, of 10, you got one. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I want him, but I really want him to be successful. And sometimes being successful is, is doing whatever yeah. you yeah. can do. Yeah. And yeah. I.e., uh, that's why voc ed is important. Oh, yeah. That's why higher education and uh, moving on through college to become whatever you want to become is important. But we don't, we sh can't take one of those trails away. I agree. Mm -hmm. And just focus on one. We have to that's have them been all. Doing. But that's yeah, what we've been we've doing. Been, we tried to focus on one and make the scope right. narrow. Right. We got to widen the right. scope. And Although that's why we're losing so many of our right. kids. You can't. You can't. You can't have too many. You can't have more. You can't have more chiefs than Indians. And I think another. And I think another <laughs> part to that is the mentoring and the coaching. Yes. I think kids Talk cannot to. let be left behind. They right. need to have ongoing coaches and mentors assigned to work, especially uh, minority students. Mm -hmm. um, they don't always understand that they can have their own business or this is an option. I think they they drop out. And we don't even see them. Frustration, frustration, kills them all. Um, not, not being successful, mm -hmm. not having anybody there to help you. And I, I, I just think it's a huge problem not having the mentors and the coach. I think every student needs a mentor and a coach. Well, you know the the beautiful, the beauty thing about voc ed, and you know, having been there, you've been there also too, in the voc ed aspect of it. You almost, you almost sort of like a, a just an individual, if you will. It's almost like you're boxing. You, you, you got to have the skills on your own. You learn, you know what right. I mean. And the same thing with voc ed. You know, if you're doing carpentry and you're working on a project, 
-hmm. you got to cut that piece of wood just right. You got to mm -hmm. do the angle right, or you got to bend that metal right, if you will, or you got to weld that weld that that bend right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it gives the all of a sudden that education is sitting right there on that mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got to know numbers, if you will, to why measure right. You know what I mean? That's I got, it. I got, mm -hmm. Why man? <laughs> right. I got right. to read because I got to read the instructions. Mm -hmm. You got know I me. Mean? Yeah. So I'm I'm forced now. I've got something. I've got some motivation now to pick up this book and read. Now when Miss Ann jumps up in there and says, "Okay, fine, you got to read this assignment." Guess what? I can read. Right. Because mm -hmm. I'm motivated. But if she gives me the right book, yes, she gives me the right book. Mm -hmm. You know, this is whether it be carpentry or this, that, and the other. Under mm -hmm. today's criteria, you know, they, they're giving these Shakespearean books and then you know, read Shakespeare and whatever. Look. I, I don't know nothing about no Shakespeare, you know. Well, I, I like know, Shakespeare. I know how to divide some dope. <laughs> I do too. I know how to divide some dope. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's it. And that's and that's the thing that you have to understand is that, you know, when I was in school, my teacher told me something that made me take English, mm -hmm. and that was you're afraid of your verb forms. I had no clue, you know. And I'm in college. And he tells me that. So I, I end up majoring in language, arts, social studies, and uh, education. Hmm. I go to a school. I'm not going to name the school. I might have once. You have to go back and check the archives. But I went to a school where I was doing my teacher observing. Hmm. And the teacher in that room was dividing the room into two sections. He had eight kids. It was only 12 kids in the class. He had eight kids that went to the back of the room and did what they wanted to do as long as they kept quiet. Mm. And he had four kids that he taught. Mm. And I'm sitting in the middle looking at this going, I don't want to be in this system. Wow. And now today, now today is this, you put eight kids in the corner over here. You don't put them in the corner. You give them so many pills, right? Mm -hmm. is that the reason you give them well, pills Well, no, now. not pills. Wait, 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 you, give them, you give them pills now. You got to calm them down. <laughs> calm them down. Yeah. Maybe it, some of the yeah. parents is do that. that. What they do? No, I'm talking about in the school now. Don't they, don't they give them pills? I think you can pills give them pills. Oh, oh, yeah, they give them. School. They give them. <laughs> I think <laughs> the parent can give it to them at home. You yeah. Mean, oh, you yeah. give. Oh, so the teachers give the parents. I don't think the parents can, or the teachers can. I heard this field thing. Well, what the teachers what the teachers can do. Is is look at a kid and determine Diagnose. what 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 what, what area it should be, and they end up over in what we used to yeah. call the dummy room. Right. Well, well I tell you what, I tell you know. what we'll do. You won't do the little research. We're gonna take a short break, and yeah. well, I want to talk about these pills because I mean, you, you've been in that system. You know what the. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they did. We're gonna take no. a short break, folks. We're gonna take a short <laughs> break, and we're gonna come right back and continue this conversation. In fact, we might even open up the lines too. Maybe we might be able to open up the lines, depending upon what the staff might do. They're they're chuckling in there because they but they're so ex they're, they're such an expert, you know, on on, this, on these systems and whatever. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Folks, I'm glad you're joining us. For those of you who haven't, uh, hey, you can you can catch us on the the next repeat, if you will, as you know, on Tuesday and on channel 23 at 12 noon, and uh, next week, uh, and then uh, on Friday at 8 p.m. on channel 22, you can see the same show. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so please join us, okay? But now what we're doing, we're talking about um, this new approach. I mean, Bob and I are going to join forces. Or the, the local Republicans and Democrats okay. are going to take this issue, and we're going to run with something. We're going to be focusing, if you will, on our youth <laughs> and education. And one of those areas we're going to be focusing on is voc ed. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to do. We just happen to have a, as one of our guests, our major <laughs> guests, and possibly part of the part of the solution, if you will, and part of the team is Miss Cynthia Harris, who happens to be Dr. Harris, if 
you will, who was an educator in her own right, has quite a background, but she was the last performing, uh, as far as I'm concerned, principal at Jefferson High School. And as you know now that we're talking about uh, throwing Jefferson under the bus, we're not going to re refurbish it. And you would think that there would have been a loud cry, if you will, from uh, from the black community. Well, Bob, we're part of that anyway. So, yeah. well, so we're no part, matter where you live, right. you're a part that's of the right. black community. Of the deal. So oh, the bottom I like line, that. so no matter where I go, yeah, I'm right. part of the black community. That's right. <laughs> even, even President Obama is <laughs> part of the community. That's right. He's oh. part of the community. So oh. the bottom line is that. So the point I'm making is that since we are identified as such, we got to take the responsibility. That's right. We got to take the responsibility and make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. We got. Is that okay? That's cool. Okay, can I can I get a five on that? <laughs> yes, Thank absolutely. Can I take a five on that one? Yeah. That's a good deal. So, and I would hope that you will shake hands among yourselves and let's take the lead and let's show the majority community that we can do the job here within this particular community. And right. hopefully, this will kind of like go viral and go around the country because every every state in the union has this same problem, if you will. Right. So that's where we're going to go. So as we've been talking, and now we're going to continue to talk about this piece. We're talking about the the benefits of voc ed. A voc ed, but not just the kids in K1 through K12, mm -hmm. but what about the ones who, who basically fell through the cracks, i.e. they're not in the criminal justice system, will probably revisit, if you will, the voc ed that they had implemented at the criminal justice system. Remember that, Bob? I, I was I was a part of that. <laughs> hey, I, you, you know, know uh, the gene... Uh, Talk a little bit about uh, that. Well, we were, it was making blue jeans. Right, and okay. I can't remember the name of the program, but uh, the, the prisoners were making the blue jeans and were sending them out. And we got letters from blue jean makers outside mm -hmm. that we were stealing their business because we could do it on the, uh, mm -hmm. in a more thrifty way. Mm -hmm. And it stopped. And furniture down yep. in the prisons, they were making furniture. They had to open their own furniture store. And they were getting all kind of negative uh, things from furniture makers outside because we were using prison labor. And well, the unions, too, were, were yeah. breaking to these people. I well, said they were losing their jobs, you know. And so my thing is, what happens to these people when you, in, when you bring them back into society? You know, we talk about rehabilitation. But then they come back and they are ostracized because they don't have anything to contribute mm -hmm. because they've been gone for 8, 10 20 years, and they come back into this society, they go back to what they know. And so are you safe? You know, so it's, it's imperative that we do two things. One, keep our kids out of the system, and those that are in the system, let's educate them so that they can be productive when they get out. Well, you know, I'm going to suggest something while we, since we're talking that particular issue aspect of, again, going back to the whole issue of entitlement, mm -hmm. entitlements and gifts, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, now, as you know, the situation we have right now is a very high unemployment rate aspect mm -hmm. of it. And in all due respect, you're going to release a person out of the institution, <laughs> Okay, who's basically saw, saw, basically mm -hmm. done that time, but they committed a crime. So now they're on the street and they're on the probation aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And you've got people that are unemployed who didn't commit a crime, who are looking for work. You mm -hmm. got me? And so how can you have that person get on the front of the line? Right. So in many ways, I'm, my position is that, okay, let's create some jobs while they're in the institution and train them while they're in the institution. You got me? And maybe they can be assigned to work, like, for instance, if they have to build more institutions, do some of the work in the institution, if you will, give them jobs there, got me, as opposed to just letting them get out on the street. And, and then recidivism yeah, yeah, yeah. is right back where mm -hmm. you started from. They stick around for about two months, they want to do the right thing, but they can't get no job. Yeah. They're frustrated, they got a family to raise, they got to bring money home, they can't get that. Are so they, they hungry? Are they hungry and they try to get, and they get mm -hmm. right back in the same situation. Right. So we got a lot of folks, a lot of a lot of entities, if you will. I think the vocation works there as well. Yes, what I'm saying. Because the mentoring and the coaching should be with, I mean, Personally, now I know a few people that are very close to me mm -hmm. that have gone, you know, just a, you don't have to do much to go to jail these days. No. You just do a little something, you get two or three years, right? But, so knowing that, I think that the work should start while they're there. You yes, know, the coaching, right, the mentoring, right. and the but jobs. But find some jobs while they're there. And so no, they can transition. Yes, because in all due respect, we spend a lot of money on this so-called recycling thing, recidivism. You're right. we got to look at that, Bob. we got to look at it from the standpoint of saying we got to eliminate some of that yes, stuff. And I some agree. of these folks are going to have to give up those so-called entitlement and gifts if you will, and come up with some solid deal. It's like, for instance, a solution I think to the problem is if you got it, if you already got a contract to do certain things, then I'm saying I'll give you the money after the person is successful. Right. <laughs> if, you, if you got to place the person on the job, you get a, if you got a contract to place a person, a, a former offender, on a job, okay, and you get paid for that, mm -hmm. you get paid after they're on that job 
for at least two years. So mm -hmm. it means you got to have some income to keep mm -hmm. yourself going. And you don't get no money until that person is on that job for two years. Therefore, you getting credibility on the job yeah. from the employer's standpoint. Right now, it don't matter. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So that's something, Bob, we're going to have to agree to. I mean, that might be a conservative thing. What sure. do you think about that, something well, like that? No, I, I understand it. I mean, if you want a person to stay out of jail, it's not just a job. Let's, if, if we can have people come across the borders and receive citizenship without coming in legally, yes, right. then we should have some type of program where if you did not commit a violent crime, against society that you can work off your time your that sentence per se i, I an example is you stole someone's purse you uh, kicked the door you kicked right, the right, door right, 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 you got you right, got right. six months eight months uh it's on your record so when you go and apply for a job if you don't put that down and they do a background check and find out about it two one or two things can happen one for sure you won't get the job Two, if you didn't put it down, they didn't do a background check, they got, you got the job, five years later, something happens on the job, they do a background check and find that out, they can fire you for lying on your application. Mm -hmm. So here's the way you work it. But if the person is if competent, the person, though, but if the person is competent and does a good job, then I'm saying, okay, fine. But if he does something wrong, then guess what? Whatever that dollar factor is in terms of how much he does wrong, pay the employer. Right. Pay the employer, mm -hmm. not pay, i.e., some entity on the outside end. You hear what I'm kind of coming from? I understand. But on the other hand, but if the entity has the contract and the person is successful and he does a good job, mm -hmm. then I'm saying everybody's fine. Then pay that person. And, and I also think tell them that what it is. if you're working together, you already know that this is person has it on their record. I think right. we should stop trying Let to play a game about that. Right. It should be set up. Yeah. If you're mentoring in and out, yes. it's, it's part of the process. I was yes. a, a teacher core intern. And, you know, we, we, we were just put in the system. Everybody knew what we had coming in. And I just think we don't even have to play a game with right, that. Right, right, right. We, this could be a pilot program, too, with the mentoring and the coaching and the jobs. So right, I think right. the voc ed, Good we point. could have a piece with the in-jail piece and Good then point. just mm -hmm. a piece for the school. Well, not a piece that says that uh, if, you, if you are clean for five years, yeah. Don't do anything yeah. uh, against yeah. society for five years. Expunge your, expunge yeah. your, re expunge expunge your record. Expunge exactly. your right. yeah. Get that you know, Now all of a sudden we got a, a regular person out here that don't have to go through all of this. Wasn't, yeah. this wasn't on that particular day, wasn't Roy J doing he's, something he's, like that? He's was he doing, doing something I'm not along sure that exactly what's on I don't know what that is about yeah. that. But maybe Roy might be able to we get, maybe we get, contact him. I think we should have a conversation with And see what that's all about and get him on the team. You And see, this is the thing that I'm talking about where we don't have to reinvent the we no, no. All we have to do is add some spokes to it to make it true. And maybe a good it. couple of pilot programs that could be ongoing. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, but, I you know, I like the idea from the standpoint of saying, okay, if a person is getting out with these with these so-called minor violations mm -hmm. or whatever, yeah. then, and if the person is very, very qualified in doing a particular skill, mm -hmm. let the employers know that. And then right going in front. the door, right? Let exactly. them know right We're up the front. And at you. the same time saying, hey, look here, here's the program here. You hire this person, if they're the best, and, and they go through an application process, and they're the best person to be picked, pick them. Mm -hmm. And then we're saying, we'll pick up the charge if, in fact, the person does anything harmful. It doesn't, if they aren't successful within a certain period of time. We'll be your insurance you. policy. We're going to be huh? your insurance policy. You'll get paid. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because we want that employee to stay there because we want them to keep hiring folks. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. But we don't need another gift or entitlement over here for someone who just writes up a contract to say, well, this person is good, you know, blah, 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 routine. And then nothing. Mm -hmm. If we got a probationary system, then mm -hmm. that, that's what we got. That's maybe, right. uh, so that's something we need to talk about on the table. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Okay. I think it's excellent. So. Along that particular line, what about the trades, Bob? I mean, uh, you know, the, you, you think the unions might be feeling comfortable well, with, uh, with... Well, the, the, trade, the trades is somewhat of a closed shop, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and they have their idea of what they want as far as their people are concerned. And number one, when you're a union, when you're a union member, that union's job is to protect you and your job. And so if we can get them in on it where everyone has to go through their apprenticeship program mm -hmm. or whatever program they have mm -hmm. or whatever they buy into whatever program we have and it's not a bumping system where right. we're going to bump the guys right. that are in your system out but if they're qualified they're, they're, you go through the same right. process we you're going to have to be qualified right, and because we're all in this boat right right and so right. you're going to have to be qualified and if the if everybody so the most qualified person gets the job 
rather than your family member, your your yeah. best friend. Hopefully you they know, broken that piece we, up. We get, we get that. Well, you know, on that same note, as far as the trades are concerned, now, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. I know that it's one of those definitions for the trades, the laborers, for instance, mm -hmm. they can pick up ex-offenders and whatever. They've oh, got yeah. folks that come on in there. I mean, they have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Now, other, the other aspects of it, they don't pick them up. Right. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when they get in that labor aspect of there are certain jobs they can't do. They and can't I do think... federal jobs and things of that nature mm -hmm. because of their record and whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. But they can pick up felon and whatever. So my point is that there's an opportunity there. Mm -hmm. You got my point? Because the trades basically pick from that group to go on the job. Right. So that's, a, that's an area that I think we should we could focus on. I if agree. You will. And I think we should um, be wide open in our minds about this happen. These are not accidents. The system itself in our communities, we, we lean kids in this, these ways mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we don't care for them. We mm -hmm. don't give them the self-esteem, the motivation, the support for learning. Mm -hmm. This is what you have at the right. end. And to pretend like these kids are doing this on their own is no, a misnomer to me. You know, when, uh, of course, we all don't have the best of families. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so these And they don't kids even are, have the good dysfunctional. Like, yeah. you know, I got a dysfunctional <laughs> one, but it's a good dysfunctional one. <laughs> all these dysfunctional right, people right. went to college, right? right but right. they have the other kind of dys... Yeah, and I right, think right. that is a problem. When and the, I think we all have to own part of that problem in the community, the churches, the businesses, and the individuals. Right, we, right, so we right. have to care for these people that may not be able to do like we do. We would make it in spite of whatever dysfunctionality right. was well, going. Here, on that particular note, let's see if we can open up the lines and we'll continue talking. But if you've got anything on your mind in regards to what we're talking about, please give us a call. You know, if you, you like the idea, fine. And, you know, hey, at some point in time, we're going to continue doing this exactly, here on I love the it. show. <laughs> and the bottom line is that if you want to join us, you can join us in many ways. You can join us by listening and giving us input. Maybe we might even put together a, a kind of a gathering of some sort. I was sort. thinking about Putting a summit. Putting together a gathering. Yeah, and a we gathering. Can just kind of yeah. you know, let everybody talk, bring educators there, bring bring the, bring the government there, the whole nine yards. Right. Bring, bring Democrats there. And Republicans. Bring Republicans. Oh, I think there. this might Liber lead libertarian, toward libertarians a, a and, pilot program of some kind yeah. that we could put together. Yeah, yes. okay. So please give us a call. You got the number on the screen, and you can give us a call. We are live today. This is Sunday, so give us a call. And, uh, you know, but, but that's the bottom line. If you don't give us a call, get together with some of your friends or whatever and, and think about think about a, a, a loved one that might be incarcerated today. Think about that and seeing whether this is a way, if you will, that we want to try to see if we can do something for that person right. because we know that that person wants to make sure that they raise their family. And, you know, we got a lot of women in the institutions, too, at this point in time. Yes. And then they've got to go through this with their kids and things of that nature. They would like to be whole, too, for a mm -hmm. change. And that's what we want to work on. And that we're going to give it our best. I mean, we've been around for yeah. quite some time, and and so we don't want to we don't want to negate anybody for that matter. You know, the fact of the matter is, we just want to focus and go forward. If you don't like what we're doing, then continue doing what you're doing. <laughs> right. But if you want to if you want to give up something on a more positive base, then throw it on the table. Right. Because you know, hey, no no person is an island. That's right. You know, I don't know everything. Bob don't know everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Harris don't, but I know Dr. Harris does. She know, she know more. She, she know more. Than we, I know some things. I know some things. She know more than we do. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so so I think it's a very important piece, and I think the timing is right. I mean, uh, everybody in the country wants to do something. We got to bring jobs from overseas, and we got to mm -hmm. be ready for those jobs. We got to have a mm -hmm. skilled labor force, if you will. We've got a control environment, in all due respect, right. in, the, in the criminal justice system. I mean, I can even see things like once we've trained folks in an apprenticeship program in the institution, all of a sudden we can develop instructors from there. Well, that's what I'm seeing, but I'm, you know, I'm yeah. totally and, focused and on the internal as well. Mm -hmm. yes. I just really want to see us give them the mentoring, the coaches, and yes. the internal kind yes. of structure yes. that yes. will support them to feel better about themselves like what led you down that path you know just constantly looking at responsibility what it takes for bold leadership and self-expression some of the issues psychological issues that our students and people in our community deal with i think we should begin to look at that and then give this give them side by side the internal with the with the trades. Yes, and like I said, folks. Bottom line, we're going to be going straight on. In all due respect, and not interested in rehabbing Jefferson High School. We're going to be focusing on Jefferson High School. I think we have. Okay, look like we've got a caller. They beat me up over here. <laughs> Calling you on the <laughs> air. Your question or comment, please. Talk to me. Hello. Hello. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Williams brought up the fact about the uh, expungement after five years. You know, the trouble is with the justice system is the uh, perpetual punishment, and we must change that because 
the, congressional, the correctional industrial complex is just raping us all. And the mm -hmm. criminal justice industrial complex is just terrorizing all the people. Okay, is that a question, uh, caller? Well, that's basically a statement. The thing okay. is that uh, how can we uh, make a change in that uh, so that we can get into Mr. Williams' uh, suggestion of having the uh, expungement at five years so we can clear people up? Because the records show that most people, after they get in trouble, the vast majority never get in trouble again, but they still have that uh, perpetual punishment. Okay. Right. Call at the same time. We, 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 I left uh, William the hand out there. But what about the vocab discussion we've been having? Have you, have you, did you look at the show? Did you have you been looking at the show? What do you well, think I about think the idea of the vocab at, uh, piece? I went to Benson Tech in my early years, okay. and I found it very helpful. And uh, we should get that back. And because a lot of st I even had had shop in, in grade school, it was very helpful. Mm -hmm. the kids just don't have that. Okay. Well, thank you very, thank you thank very much, Carla. Appreciate yeah. that very much. You know, one, the expungement one, piece. Yeah. Well, one of the things that that happens uh, as far as expungement is concerned is that we have to understand that going sending people to prison is big business. I got There's that. a lot of well, money to be made well, sending people well, to prison. Well, we're talking about stepping on toes. That's yeah. What, that's what we're talking about right now. <laughs> and so. Uh, it's becoming more of the American way than getting a job. Entitlements and gifts. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Entitlements and gifts. That's and that, so that's a big issue. We got to know. change the mindset. We, well, the entitlements and gifts. Yeah. I mean, let's put it on the table, right? That's it. You got me in all due response. And those folks who are getting entitlements and gifts, mm -hmm. we're auditing the system. Mm -hmm. We're auditing the system, bottom line. We cannot continue to give monies to folks who are basically benefiting on their own, quotes, quotes these, these toys and whatever, right. and the kids are just going down the drain, and mm -hmm. folks are sitting up in the institution, rotting away, if you will, getting out and committing all kinds of deals. And you know, and, and we feel that, we're hey, we're comfortable if we're sitting in a three or $400,000 house, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden something happens to that person. They say, what do we do now? You can't put a fence around your house, well, not today. Mm -hmm. here's, here's the thing that I keep telling people. In 1995, when I went over to South Africa, I saw how the well-to-do lived. And they lived behind barbed wire, uh, brick walls with bars on their windows and lock, three and four locks on their doors and so they could be safe. And sometimes guards at the, at, the, at the gate so that they could be safe rather than share, rather than educate, rather than give to those people that didn't have. You know, uh, give them jobs, give them... Uh, the feeling of self-worth. Mm -hmm. And in America, we're beginning to go that way, i.e. when we, mm, everyone is trying true. to get us into a two-tier system, the haves and the have-nots. And when you get to that point in life, the have-nots, when they begin to, to get together, they're going to try to take what the haves have. It's just that simple. So in America, though, we have what is called that middle class. Mm -hmm. They kind of keep things balanced, balanced <laughs> where these people can see where they can come up to mm -hmm. and right. help the system move forward. Mm -hmm. And these people can see how far they can go up to here. But when you start taking the middle out and everything becomes one, all these people falls down. And bingo, you got a chaotic system. Well, you know, on that same note, you know, you, they're always point. talking about the whole idea of the tax situation. About the, President Obama makes the point about the, the rich should be giving a little bit more to the deal. Mm -hmm. Well, in our particular case, bringing it home, mm -hmm. I'm saying, you know, athletics has always been a, a venue, if you will, that blacks have always excelled at. And we've got right here within our own midst, it's called the trail, Portland Trailblazers. And those guys are all making $10 million or better, mm -hmm. if you will, in salary aspect of it. I'm saying as a solution, you give back, if you will, to maybe some of this, some of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, help us build a school, if you will, rather than us going around to basically trying to put together a bond measure. Right. Let's go to some of the folks, i.e., who happen to be black, who's making that kind of money, and give them that opportunity. Maybe the president can mm -hmm. say, okay, fine. Okay, well, you've given back, if you will, mm -hmm. by basically putting those monies in those coffers to help those little people out this way, as opposed to trying to tax the rest of the folks. That's just a thought. Yeah. That's a good thought, though. Just, just a thought, okay? Yeah. That's a great thought. But not only that, business. You know, uh, if, we, if we can get three or four businesses that say, hey, we support your idea, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at your idea and see how we can support your idea. The Nikes, the uh, Adidas, instead of competing for uh, 
for the for the, the clothing sales, uh, give back. Well, that's, that's within fine. The community. When you mention Nike, uh, I'm still talking about those ball players. Yeah. See, I'm just saying that maybe maybe Phil Nike put a little pressure on, on some of those uh, those folks who who's basically giving them a giving them a piece of the action on their shoes and say, okay, fine, I'll tell you what we're going to do because he's in control. And rather than give you fifty cents, I'm going to give you twenty five cents, and I'll put this other twenty five cents over here. And you got to take these folk head. You got my point. Yeah. So, so we need to come up with those kind of creative kind of solutions to show the show the majority mm -hmm. of the community, the majority of the population, that we're doing something for ourselves for a change. Got it. As see, opposed to a we're doing out. something different in, from what I've seen in a lot in a lot of places in in Oregon. And that is, we're not waiting on someone to tell us what to do and how to do it. We're trying to put something together Got it. and <laughs> not a, and not be afraid to come and listen to you and let you tell us, well, I don't think this is going to work because. Right. And we're willing to tweak it right. so right. that we make it successful. Right. right. You know, that's our that's the way we look at things versus uh, waiting on somebody to come and tell you what to do and when to do it and and all of that. And then nothing ever gets done other than a conversation and a few meetings. I like what you're saying, um, stepping out and being a bold leader and just making something happen, being responsible and listening, but not just complaining about the problem, right, right, right. but making something happen. I, I like that a lot. And, you know, and this is not just an I thing. This no. is not just a Bob or Dr. Harris or Bruce Bouchard aspect of it. You got to be able to identify with what we're talking mm -hmm. to. Trust me, because in all due respect, if you are into those gifts and entitlement, trust me, you're going to be under the bus. Yeah, mm -hmm. because yeah. it's coming, folks. I'm yeah. telling you straight up. I mean, right from Congress, they're going to be cutting a lot of stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When you hear about Medicaid, Medicare, and this, that, and the other, they're not talking about the seniors per se getting those services. They're talking about the people who've been getting gifts. Mm -hmm. In all due respect. Some of the doctors who are writing the, the deals at and doing that, uh, so, you know, oh, selling products and this, that, and the other. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But they're not talking about your seniors, your, your, as far as your seniors are concerned. They're talking about those folks who've been getting gifts in the in those various programs. So my point is that my point I'm making is is, is there's going to be an audit, a major right. audit, and a lot of folks here are going to probably suffer, if you will. Let me give you an idea. We got about two minutes. Okay. Give you a quick right. Social Security. They're talking about Social Security. Yeah, Let them. me tell you what what they can mess with in Social Security. What can? I.e., uh, you turn 65, you have a kid that is still in school, that's in high school. Okay. Or you turn 62 and you have a 17 year old in high school. That 17 year old is going to get a check. They get a check from Social Security, mm -hmm. you know, while they're going to school, whether they need it or not. So they're gonna get it. And so whether you're rich, they or can poor. take that. They can take that away. Yeah. yeah wow. Right, right, you know, right, right, right. Uh, it's all kind of things that's going of on out there. So, so, so we're gonna be talking about that. That's yeah. another political piece aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the show today. We've got about another minute, if you will. And I will just ask just briefly, the any lasting thing? We'll ask the instructor here. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Harris, what well, do you think? Well, I just think, think we need to come together and bring some people like what you're talking about, Roy J and you and Bob and myself. And we need to have some planning meetings with some other key people and begin to put a proposal together that can hit this and just maybe pilot some things and just see, just test it out and just see what happens. <laughs> We need to let bygones be bygones. Yes. A lot of us in the in the community don't talk to each other because of something that happened 25 years oh ago. Oh my God! We need to <laughs> let it go, uh -huh. and we need to, to look at what's going on today and start trying to take care of the issues of today. And Blazers, please understand where we're coming from. You know, a lot of folks can't even afford the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I can't. I'm just laying out here. Oh, you're anyway, kidding. Hey, I'm so poor, I can't pay attention. Folks, thank you very much for joining us. No, that's um, me. <laughs> thanks you. Thank you, Virginia. We got quite a job on our yeah. hands, yes. just like Congress has, too. We got deadlines, too. And we're going to be working on it. We'll probably come up maybe next week, and we'll probably have another program to talk about this piece, okay? Thank you very much. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Have a good one.